Greetings. Welcome to Bank Beat Conversations. I'm Tom Bankston, publisher of Bank Beat and Bank News Magazines. We've got a great guest today, John Healy, who is with Crown Bank in Edina, Minnesota. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Tom. Yeah, happy to have him on. He's vice president of the Bank Holding Company Association. We're going to talk a little bit about the BHCA in just a few minutes. But first, let's just talk about how things are going in the banking industry and in the economy. Let's talk about the economy in general. I know you follow that very closely. We've had some great conversations about the economy in general. What do you make of the current state of things? Yeah, well, the good news is in the economy is, you know, the service sector really hasn't had a recession and it's, it's uh, humming along, doing really well. The good sector's struggling a little bit. Uh, you know, but overall, uh, the economy's been all right despite the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, uh, you know, which is dampened some of the economy and particularly the financial part of the economy I think that you know runs on uh, lending and yeah that has hurt uh, community banks and mid-sized banks particularly because it's raised our cost on deposits uh, you know the fact that the Fed uh, pays more pays a significant higher interest rate than it used to on bank deposits and institutional deposits at the Fed then raises the deposits uh, for the rest of the deposits we compete for Mm -hmm. uh, but over, overall, uh, I think the economy is good right now. We, we're we seeing uh, that the inflation has come down. The uh, I was just looking at the new month-on-month -month figures for core PCE are 0.2% for the second month in a row. And that's 2.4% uh, annualized, which I think is the more important figure than the media quotes. The media quotes a year-on-year -year figure, which is really in the rearview mirror. It's really about the downtrend of the last few months. Yeah. So, you know, the battle on inflation, I think, is, is won. You know, it's really won by no more 2020 and no more 2021 uh, spending like we had. It took a long time for that to filter the system. Sure. And the high rates have helped, but if all I can say, if interest rates made a difference with inflation, we would have had inflation in 2012 and 2013. Interesting. Right. Good observation. Uh, how about some of your customers? Obviously, you speak to people in business all the time, both your peers and your customers. What are they telling you? Are they uh, confirming the notion that uh, we're past the inflationary period? Yeah, you know, they, they feel really uh, healthy uh, overall, and the revenues and net incomes of our customers are fine. Uh, the challenge is just the high cost of borrowing. You know, it is impacting uh, real estate. Real estate transactions have slowed. Uh, there's a bigger bid-ask spread between buyers and sellers, obviously, right now. Uh, and from the banking standpoint, you know, lending business has really slowed down. A lot of banks are just seeing flat loans, you know, year on year right now because of the high interest rates. You know, there's not as much motivation to borrow. So it is impacting that. There, you know, there's no question. Sure. And banks used to do so well on deposits. How, what, two, one, two years ago, you had all the deposits you really needed. Liquidity was abundant. But my sense is that's changed, and I'm curious what you make of that, how you're dealing with that. What are your customers demanding? How, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, the high interest rates have resulted in uh, negative money supply growth. So, you know, that's also meant fewer deposits for us to compete with. So it's been, you know, it's been a real challenge. It's been kind of a day-to-day -day challenge. And, you know, there's no, there's no panacea or perfect formula. You know, it's a, it, it's a customer by customer thing, but you know we definitely have paid more on deposits, and you know we still look at it as as a long term thing. You know that the customer, our customers are more important long term. You know, in short term, unfortunately, you know we're having to pay a lot more for deposits, and overall, that is really affected. Uh, you know, net income, net operating income for banks. My sense is that the average community bank is running about 50 percent of last year's net operating income, and that's before debt service. So that's a noticeable so that's difference. A, that's a huge impact, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And our, our margins have certainly uh, come down significantly. Okay. So, and it, we had kind of a rough spring. I mean, the media was all excited about the three bank failures that happened in the spring. I mean, do you see that be, as being emblematic of a, of, a, of a bigger issue in the industry, or, or, do you, or do you think that was pretty isolated? What would be your, people must ask you about those bank failures all the time. I'm just curious, how do you respond? Yeah, I mean, I mean we really don't because uh, these particular banks had a real problem with uh, their bond portfolio uh, with their negative AOCI and their bond portfolio. 
and Silicon Valley Bank was involved in you know more nefarious activities on top of that. Uh, so you know they were they were pretty unique in the marketplace on what happened, but it did certainly rapidly change you know the marketplace perception of banks and you know people were uh, very concerned for you know safety of banks at the time. Did you have to do a lot of communication with your yeah, own customers? Yeah, we did a lot of communication, uh -huh. and uh, we added a new a new program that allows us to have unlimited insurance on deposits by using a uh, an organization. I believe the name is ICS that trades uh, deposits deposits between banks, and it's kind of a conduit. Uh, well, the, the point that you're making about deposit insurance is really an important one. I mean that. That's a, a topic that really bubbled to the top this spring as a result of these bank failures. Everybody was talking about the need for deposit insurance reform. It kind of seems like that's dow died down a little bit at this point, but I'm wondering, are you still hearing concerns about that among your customers? You're right. You know, it has died down, Tom, but, you know, let me say I'm, I'm for at least doubling the, the deposit insurance because there's never been any inflationary indexing on that, and, and there needs to be. So it's a lot less you know, in real dollars now than it used to be mm -hmm. last time they raised the number. Mm -hmm. and, and your sense is that your customers are sensitive to this, that they are aware of the limits and what yeah, the they risks really are. are. Okay. Yeah, we, we, when we signed our customers up for the unlimited deposit insurance program uh, with the ICS conduit, we had a lot of demand. Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess we've got 15% plus of our deposits using that program right now. Okay, yeah. sure. Well, that is significant. Super program. I see. Sure, sure, sure. And of course, in addition to all the economic challenges, the interest rate environment and so forth, there's so much going on in the world of technology and how banks actually deliver banking services. And I'm curious, you know, what's your, um, what's your take on how to approach the technology challenge? Are there particular things that you're focusing on at your bank or are there particular things that your customers are asking you for? Well, I got to be frank with you that I really feel like we're behind the game in that and, and we're not alone with other community banks. If I could snap my fingers, I would hire a community bank technology innovation officer and make that their supreme focus, you know, to, to, find, to find the innovations, to find the enhancements that make sense for us because there's, there's hundreds out there mm -hmm. and there's probably dozens that can really help. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to one of our guests at the bank holding company uh, event coming up is Bank Tech Ventures, and a as you may know, you know they've found a number of just excellent community bank vendors and uh, new technology providers, and I'm always excited to hear who, who they talk about and you know what the trends are. And we, along with uh, several several other organizations, have have investments in them also. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. They, uh, uh, they are one of our guests at the Fall Seminar. Fall Seminar is coming up October 2nd and 3rd. Uh, the theme of that event is M&A Success Strategies. Um, so we're always excited about our seminars um, and we hope that uh, folks everywhere will consider uh, uh, coming out. And uh, all of the details about that event are available on our website which is www.thebhca.org. You have been a member of the BHCA for a number of years. Just tell us a little bit about your, what I like to call your BHCA journey. <laughs> well, I think I first heard of it when I read the magazine. And all of a sudden I started coming to some seminars and I was not as involved in our bank, although I was in the holding company. Uh, so. You know, it really became interesting to me uh, several years ago, and it just kind of grew on me, and I kept, you know, learning more and more and uh, gaining relationships with people I, I'd meet there or people I knew that I would see there, you know. And I met so many great high-achieving peers that I've networked with, and even people my senior, you know, that I can learn from. I mean, I really appreciate those relationships, too. You know, I'm just a baby boomer, you know, a work in process like everybody else. But it's just been wonderful, the people I've met there. And, and we talk about the networking really yeah. being one of the primary benefits of a BHCA yeah. membership. So I'm glad to hear you mention that and that you're making the most of that. Um, now, you've been to sem several of the BHCA seminars over the years. 
Uh, just tell me typically what what do you get out of this seminar? If someone hasn't been to one and they're thinking about maybe attending, what would you tell them that they're going to experience? Well, I mean, several things. Uh, you know, for instance, the caliber of professionals that you have there, I think you've always got people on the all-star team. I mean, this year, this year you've got, you know, investment banking, Emeritus, Curtis, Carpenter. You've got the, the regional champs, Oak Ridge, Brain Trust. Those guys yep. are brilliant, too. Uh, you know, there's always, there's always some great professionals and great guests to learn from. And, you know, you get a really good sense of what's going on out there in the marketplace in the world. And, and you also, you know, just get to pick their brains because they've always got some new thoughts and some new insights. Yeah, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but you mentioned a couple of folks who are really nationwide leaders in the community bank M&A space. And our fall seminar is devoted to the topic of mergers and acquisitions. And we're fortunate to have really top, top people out of the investment banking world, uh, the accounting world, the legal world, law firms, uh, really located you know, right in the Midwest, so they, they participate in our seminars and, and we can all benefit from their experience and knowledge. We have been doing uh, a fall seminar devoted to M&A for a number of years now. Our spring seminar is generally more focused on broader ownership issues. But considering the fall seminar, even if you're not considering uh, acquiring something or selling something, it's still a worthwhile seminar, I believe. I mean, I, I'm trusting that you think that as well. What, what would you say to someone who says, well, I'm not looking to buy or sell anything. Why should I go to the, uh, the fall seminar? The caliber of people you have, as well as the variety, and I, and I want to compliment you, Tom, for making it fresh every year. You know, there's always, there's always sl a slight variation of the theme. There's new guests. There's new insights. It's never the same as the year before. So that makes it interesting. So people that have been there before, you know, it's always going to be new. There's always going to be something to pick up. John, you mentioned the benefit of networking with your peers at our seminars, and we've always uh, considered that to be one of the primary values of BHCA membership. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I'll tell you another value I, I figured out is it's a time saver because I can catch up with five or 10 or a dozen or more people that I would normally have lunch with. So, I mean, you know, this two-day event is saving me five to 10, five lunches or more with people that I would need to do to catch up. So it's a time saver, can you believe it? <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. I do appreciate it. We like to think of the events as being efficient, yeah. so I'm glad to know that it adds to your own personal yeah. efficiency as right well. And it seems like uh, among board room conversations, the value of the bank, uh, the bank's position in the marketplace, those are perennial topics yeah. that I think at our seminar, we kind of give you some information to, uh, to think mm -hmm. about those kinds right. of things. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, John, I do really appreciate you being here. I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, again, I encourage you to think about the BHCA Fall Seminar, October 2nd and 3rd. It's in uh, uh, the Westin Galleria Hotel at in Edina. Great location, beautiful venue. Um, you can see all of the agenda and program details on our website, which is www.thebhca.org. So we'll bring this to a close. John, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. And this has been another Bank Beat Conversations with Tom Bankston.